Do you want to find out how the top Indian grandmasters play chess? Well then this video is for you. I'm going to present three games, all from the chess Olympiad. Let's begin. So first up, white is rated 2215, black is Gukesh, rated 2684. He recently crossed the 2700 barrier. So first up, what opening do we have in the first game? The King's Indian. Gukesh is rated about 400 points, higher than his opponent. He's going to play an opening, which gives him a lot of winning chances. White plays a very flexible setup here with two bishops in the center. Not committing the knight yet. Not committing any of these pawns yet. Black has a few ways to react. Maybe e5, maybe c5, maybe knight d7, preparing one of the pawn breaks. However, today Gukesh plays knight a6, going for c5. g4. A reason why you put the bishop here is to get a very fast kingside attack. Gukesh strikes, and now typical way to break open the center. g5. Brilliant move coming up, because when I saw this position, I thought you just retreat the knight. Because you cannot put the knight on the edge, because the guy takes twice, right? Wrong. That is exactly what the guy does. Queen d2, he doesn't even take it. Well, first question, we have to look at this capture because I thought this move was impossible. Take, take. Why is just one pawn? But black gets a very fast counterplay. Knight is coming into c2. One move is to retreat the queen. But if you castle queen a5, it's too dangerous. Knight, queen, bishop are in the attack. You might even open up the center. If you play a careless move like a3, you just crash through. That's how fast it is for black to win. If you take check, game over. The king has to run, but if it doesn't run, check, king here, and then mate. All of a sudden, going back to the game, in this moment, I just want to have a look at queen d1 as well. Just to defend that pawn, we're going to take, and after take, c4, coming into that square. Knight d3 is now a very real possibility. All black has done is given up one pawn to get this initiative. And just one more question. After take, take, I think we can go rook here. The bishop can come out. Let's have a look. Bishop out to f5, and then we can control that square coming in. Let's go back a few moves. So this was one gigantic moment, a critical moment so far in the game. Put the knight on the edge, and the funny thing is, the guy can't take it. You know something's gone wrong with your position when you line up your bishop and queen to stop the guy playing the move, and then the guy plays it anyway. Queen d2, ready to castle. F5. Now the guy takes it. Take, take. And after knight e2, e5. Big decision for Gukesh to lock it up. One decision I was considering, even though it's a horrible decision to give up your brilliant bishop is to take and then go e5. But white now strikes with f4, breaking open. I was considering, well, with f3 you can lock it up. And the bishop comes out. This bishop isn't really that good. However, this line is not good for black because white can open it up with f4. So back to the game. A few critical moments already. e5. In this position, Someone who is 400 points higher rated should be able to win this most of the time. Take, take, tuck the bishop back, and now queen d7. So the knights really do block this brilliant bishop. Queen d7. Castle, and now knight b4. b3, king in the corner. Perhaps black wasn't sure what to do, but now is the time to strike. b5. Cool move great move you can't play knight takes because your knight hangs and if you play pawn takes a6 just a normal way to break open the position you should lock it up but if you take then take it's almost game over so many entry squares putting pressure on the a2 pawn this rook can come in this bishop is always controlling so many light squares around the king and then one more option you can even flick in a move like c4 trying to open up the position However, going back a few moves, perhaps black was not confident with striking b5 right now. King h8, king b2, kicking the knight away. And it turns out, well, time to retreat because it looks like 
white's going to play a3 so he retreats straight away rook f3 looks very dangerous just trying to control squares in the white camp knight f6 giving up a pawn in order to trade off this bishop because if you do nothing rook f3 looks very dangerous the other rook can come in this knight can come back b5 so his opponent actually gave up the pawn take 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 a3 rook f8 double rooks on the fr rook f3 this bishop is better than this one controlling lots of squares around white rook g1 knight c7 planning to go b5 perhaps but no Gukesh chooses to bring the knight all the way around going for the f5 square a pair of rooks come off let's keep the rooks on gotta keep the tension if you trade too many pieces Gukesh's chances to win decrease rook f7 f4 if you take this bishop comes in the game no. lock it up but then this bishop is out of the game for now there's a really cool idea coming up knight f5 attack the rook queen e7 attacking the rook no the point is to defend the bishop so then you kick the rook away and then we focus on the king side all of the pieces knight bishop queen rook two pawns and the center pawn are all on the king side h4 this is the winning idea do you remember a long time ago white played the bishop here to take this pawn but he now gets both pawns in the attack and guess what it's not about the pawns it's the bishop coming in hit the queen drop it back white drops the queen back trying to create something on this diagonal but nothing happens because all the squares are covered black attacks the rook wherever you move the rook you're gonna get hit and then that knight is gonna drop there's no good square if you move the rook back the knight just drops so the guy just goes queen c3 trying to mate but there is no mate black has all the squares covered check check block with the rook really cool move here you can just take but really professional finish queen f7 the guy resigned forcing a queen trade once they come off everything is hanging g2 is going to come this knight is hanging this bishop is hanging so the best move is to stop the guy queening but then you are now down a bishop you've even got this pawn to run home crushing victory 43 moves not easy but with Gukesh playing the king's indian it gave him winning chances right from the start at the end i'm going to show you a resource from lee chess explaining how all of us can get better from a specific opening next game next prodigy next top indian player i want to look at is ranak sadwani 26 11 versus 20 29 a 600 point difference basically so what are you going to see in this game the open sicilian black is going to play an accelerated dragon getting the bishop to that diagonal very fast white controls the center the d5 square with two pawns this is known as the Maroxi bind black attacks the center you defend and a pair of knights come off when you look at this position two pawns a queen and a knight control the d5 square white has four pieces four things controlling d5 really this is the square white tends to win control over in the sicilian black is fighting for control on the dark squares bishop is going to come to g7 soon bishop e2 just like we saw in the first game i know it's a totally different opening but it's a very nice way to set up your bishops if white castles that is a very careless move the king defends the bishop you might be thinking well who cares now the queen cannot take the bishop this knight attacks the bishop the queen moves out of the way take take and black has this amazing dragon bishop you can't do this it's a typical opening trap going back a few moves that's why you have to deliberately just get that queen out the way a queen sits on d3 defending the two pawns still controlling this it looks really weird to put the queen here because the bishop's in the way the queen is in the way i mean not really bishop here bishop d4 deliberately putting the bishop on this diagonal competing against the dragon bishop castle rook c8 you attack the pawn defend and now knight d7 the knight 
can come to e5. The bishops now come off, take, take. f4, f5 is a nice way to continue. But Sedwani gets the king out of the way, typical move, so then there's no dangerous check on the dark diagonal. a6, black needs to get play as well. White gets in f4, black gets in b5. You can't go b5 now because f5 traps the bishop here. That's it, it's just trapped. If you take, you can play a cool move, check, and then you take the bishop. So f4 is very dangerous, so the guy plays f6, giving some room. Bishop comes back, this is a pawn break coming up, that was the blue arrow, and you cannot take because then the rook and the queen attack the knight. A4, that's why Sadwani stops this pawn break. Hit the queen, drop it back. Queen b4, attack the pawn. And now let's defend. b5 is possible here. It doesn't look possible. 1, 2, 3, 4. But you can get this pawn break in. a5 played instead. Controlling another dark square. Just want to show you why b5 might be good. Take, take, take. Because I was wondering why give up a pawn. If that knight ever moves, then rook a3 is coming. There's too much pressure. The queen actually sits very well on b4. Even though y is up a pawn, this pawn is not going to become a queen anytime soon. So it's a positional pawn sacrifice. If the knight ever moves, the rook can come in here. That's what I was uh, discovering. So here, if you move the knight, you can even just take here. But the point I was showing was get the rook in the game. Now back to the game. This didn't happen. The guy actually went a5. H3. Is the point of this move to go g4? No. It's to play bishop g4 offering a trade. You can't move the bishop out the way because you lose your rook. So bishops now come off. You can't play f5 because take, take, take. You've just chucked a pawn. That's why bishop g4 is a great move. Finding the correct trade. The bishops come off. And notice when this happens. The strength, the control for the square belongs to white. He can play a move like e6, but then we got a new weakness. Maybe rook here. And if rook here, maybe knight here. New target. Just one pawn push, and there's a new target. That is one option. So the guy didn't play e6. Rook f3. Perhaps coming here, maybe come over to the king or the queen side. Hit the queen, and now queen d2. Very accurate move. You don't want to go allow black to play knight b4 so queen d2 great move offering a trade but trading on his terms that's what the 2600 is after you're going to trade but every trade will improve my position just like that bishop trade a few moves ago take 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 that pawn is now weak forever you attack the pawn doesn't matter i'm going to lock your queen out f5 trying to get the rook in the game doesn't work. Queen e1, now rook e7 wins the queen. Rook e7 wins the queen. We have two rooks and a queen on the same line. This is known as Alakine's gun. Very passive rook and queen, very active rook and queen. You can even take that, but no. I'm going to take here first. You can't take this way because take. It's almost checkmate. All squares covered on the sixth rank. So only a few more squares to cover on the back. Throw in a check. If the king goes to h8, queen comes here. If the king goes to f8, it is still the same move, game over. If we look at black's pieces, all boxed in here. If we look at white's pieces, all the two rooks and the queen dominate the files and the diagonals. Queen h8 is mate. Black has to block with rook f6, but then things come off in white's favor. Take, take, check. Only move is to block. And you can play check, I think that is winning. But very precise finish here, just to win the queen. Can you see the finish? It's just a two move combo where you're gonna move the queen and then the rook comes in and you pick up the black queen. I'll give you five seconds. Queen h6 check, game over. Only one move and then the rook comes in and you're gonna pick up the queen. Stay tuned to the end, I'm gonna show you a very cool Lee Chess resource. Puzzles in a specific opening to help you get better. Now we have the final game. White is Pantala Harakrishna 2720 versus Dimitrios 
Mastros Vasilis. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Rating difference of 120. So what opening are we going to get here? The Catalan, one of the best ways to play with white and one of the best ways to defend with black. D4. Many options for black. You can strike in center. Lots of different pawn moves. But the guy plays c6, setting up a solid triangle setup. Knight c3. You can take, but then white actually gets the pawn back very fast. Straight away, really. You can't defend because take. Then the bishop attacks the rook. You can block, but then you just come back. And you've got these two ugly pawn moves. That's what I was wondering when I was flicking through this game. Now, going back to the game, this didn't happen. Black just chose to develop the knights. They defend each other. And now queen d3. Queen up, just like we saw in the previous game. I know it's a different opening. The point of queen d3, we go e4 next. We go for a pawn break. b6, typical move in these kind of positions. Get the bishop out this way. Defend, and now e4, bishop a6. e5, getting even more space. In this position, you don't really want to take, 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 take. Queen is so well placed. Bishop is well placed. You don't want to play a move like bishop b7, maybe bishop here, bishop here, even a move like h4, which we're going to see very soon. Going back to the game. Here. e4. e5, attack the knight, and now a4. You want to stop your opponent going for the pawn break. One, two, three, four. Or control the b5 square. Nice c7. Black needs to go for a break as well. b5 coming up. Rook d1. Getting out of the way of any bishop hitting the rook. Rook d1. h6. Don't know. I want to play that. Doesn't do anything. Maybe f6 would have been better. A different kind of pawn break. c5 is possible as well. h6 played. h4. Typical move in any position nowadays. With this move, you control the square. 1, 2, three times. The other arrow was the yellow one. You may play h5 later to get even more space. Rook b8. Black wants to get in a pawn break. Bishop f4. b5. Take, take, get the queen out of the way. You don't want to help black with this move. Take, 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 take. Black is so fast on the queen side, getting a good amount of play. Pentala doesn't do that. He takes once, but then drops the queen back. If you play b4, then the knight can go here. The knight might come round later. 1, 2, to g3. Rook c8, face the queen. And now rook c1. Really cool move, actually. Really cool shuffle coming up. Bishop b4, attack the knight. And now queen d1. Looks like white has arranged his pieces in a good way to fight against the counterplay. Really cool way to sidestep. Now the two rooks are just taking care of black's play. Knight b6, if we look at this position, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces for black on the queen side. Later, one, two, three, four, five for white on the king side. Knight h2, that's what this mess is all about. The knight comes back here, typical way to get play. The bishop attacks the pawn. This bishop might come in the game. Please bear that in mind. A brilliant finish coming up and the queen can come into here or here. Take, 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 take. Very important to take with the pawn to stop the knight coming in. If you took with the rook, which looks all right, knight comes into b5 and we can see this square is being controlled by the knight, bishop and the rook. So don't give your opponent an easy entry square. Go back a few moves. Take, take, take. Queen e7. Knight g4. Two rooks are dealing with the pressure from black. Now it's time for white to start his attack. Bishop, knight, bishop, pawn, queen also coming in. Knight a8 looks all right because one, two, trying to get play. Another option was knight e8, so then the knight is actually closer to the king side. But the knight actually steps in the wrong direction. Brilliant combo coming up. Typical combo in these kind of positions, but it's really cool that it works out. Bishop takes pawn. What's the point of this? This square is now going to be filled with the knight. Black took, now knight check. King up, check. King here. If you go queen here, the bishop can actually come here to defend. Or it might be some really weird draw. No. Turns out after this, 
you stop this by putting the queen on the right square, queen f4, king g7, now what? If only white could find a way to get the queen on this light diagonal, it would be game over. Absolutely brilliant move coming up, and I bet his opponent from Greece missed it. Bishop takes d5. Please notice in this game, we have seen a double bishop sacrifice, if the guy takes. Now in the game, he went bishop here, but what happens if take? Well, what's the difference? Why give up the, your bishop in this way? Because now the light squares are able to be controlled by the knight and the queen. So first check, and now check. So that check wasn't possible a move ago here because there was a pawn on e6. Check, check, and now knight f6, game over. Queen h7 is mate. There's only one way to stop it, but you just take it and there's still mate on that square. Brilliant tactic. Let's go back a few moves. After this capture, bishop takes d5, this brilliant double bishop sacrifice move. Bishop d3. So then, not allowing the queen on that diagonal, but doesn't matter. We still play the move, knight check, which we saw in the line. The king moves, and now we control the diagonal. Bishop comes back with check, game over. If take, then check. If you block, then check. En passant, we win the queen. Once the king goes in the corner, it's the same finish. By the way, you can't go here because it's check and then mate. Or you can go check and then mate, same thing. Knight is just gonna come back to f6. We need two pieces to control the h7 square. We can trade rooks first and then knight f6, game over. There's no good way to stop checkmate. You can give up the queen, but then you are totally losing. Queen for knight and bishop, game over. What a total crush by Hare Krishna. Here's the resource I was talking about, how to get better at a certain opening. Game one, we saw the King's Indian. Game two, the Sicilian Accelerated Dragon, and game three, the Catalan. I'm going to include three links from the chess. The tactics, the puzzle section. Do 10 puzzles per opening. That's how you get better. Let me know what you think about this resource. Do you think these tactics are worth solving?